God is good. All the time. And all the time. God is good. Amen. Good morning and welcome to our first ever online worship for the Sunfield and Greenwood United Methodist Churches in Southern Illinois. I'm Pastor Bill Wiggs. The other voices you hear in the room are my family. And uh, we're here to share in the joy of the Lord on this fourth Sunday in Lent. If you have any prayer requests you would like to lift up um, during this service, please uh, message me, and I've already gotten a couple of those this morning, and we will have uh, prayer at the end of today's service to pray for those prayer requests. If you would like me not to read them openly on the air, just put private and I'll pray for the issue without praying the name. God knows who you are. And make sure that is to Pastor Bill Wiggs Jr. Yes, to Pastor Bill Wiggs Jr., the messenger there off of Facebook. So I encourage you in that. Um, today, as we enter worship, I want to share just uh, this uh, Hebrews 4 is our call to worship, verses 14 to 16. Since then, we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God. Let us hold fast to our confession. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who in every respect has been tested as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore approach the throne of grace with boldness, so that we may receive mercy and find grace in help in time of need. Let's pray. Gracious and loving Father, we come before you today, gathered in our homes, gathered around uh, the United States, even for some who are picking us up uh, away from here. We pray, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit will be present in each location where this worship service is taking place. We ask, God, that you would be honored and glorified during this time, and that your people would be fed from your word. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you would certainly fill us with your power today, that we may fully worship you and experience your presence, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to sing a couple of uh, hymns this morning that pretty much everybody knows, and we're starting out with How Great Thou Art. <clears throat> Let's sing together. O oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder. Thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. When through the woods and forest glades I wander, and hear the birds sing sweetly in the trees, when I look down from lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze, then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. How great Thou art, how great Thou art. And when I fail, that God his Son not sparing, 
sent him to die. I scarce can take it in that on the cross my burden gladly bearing he bled and died to take away my sin then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art when christ shall come with shout of acclamation and take me home what joy shall fill my heart then i shall bow in humble adoration and there proclaim my god how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art amen we're going to sing victory in jesus i know that those of you at home you don't have the books but we tried to pick hymns that we knew that uh, the majority of people know even many people who do not regularly attend worship do indeed know a lot of these hymns as they have been sung uh, throughout our culture for a very long time. So if you're at home and you're just watching without singing, get to singing, will you? The Bible says we got to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Amen. So let's do that with all our hearts. Let's sing it together. Victory in Jesus. I heard, <coughs> I got to try again. I started in the basement. I heard an old, old story. How a Savior came from glory, how he gave his life on Calvary to save a wretch like me. I heard about his groaning, of his precious blood's atoning. Then I repented of my sins and won the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory. Beneath the cleansing flood, I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus brought and brought to me the victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him. And all my love is due him. He plunged me to 
victory beneath the cleansing flood. I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory. And I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea. About the angels singing and the old redemption story. And some sweet day I'll sing up there the song of victory. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and he bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Oh, victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing flood. Amen, amen. The Lord is with us today, even as we are separate from one another in our homes and uh, workplaces, for those of you who are at work right now, and we know that God is present. Let's pray to the Lord. Holy Spirit, enter into this message today, that your word may be proclaimed with the boldness that comes from knowing that we do have victory in Jesus. We thank you, God, that you are indeed coming into our hearts and our lives, into our homes, that we may experience you. And now may the words of my mouth and meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. <clears throat> well, if you'll take your Bibles, and since you're in your home, I know you didn't forget to bring it with you, uh, but if you don't have a print version, uh, please get out your electronic device. We're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4, and then we're going to skip down to verse 17. Matthew 8, 1 through 4, and verse 17. And while you're going there, this is the 11th sermon in our series, The Life and Times of Jesus Our Savior. And since uh, you're worshiping online with us today instead of in person, it's likely that some of you who are watching have not heard all 10 of the other sermons. Frankly, it's probably likely that some of you who are part of our church haven't heard all 10 of the other sermons. But uh, if you would like to listen to them, I invite you to go to the Sunfield United Methodist Church webpage and listen there. The Sunfield webpage is www.sunfieldumc.com. Today we are reading from the Gospel according to Matthew chapter 8, verses 1 through 4 and 17, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Hear now the word of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Large crowds followed Jesus as he came down the mountainside. Suddenly a man with leprosy approached him and knelt before him. Lord, the man said, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Jesus reached out and touched him. I am willing, he said, be healed. And instantly the leprosy disappeared. Then Jesus said to him, don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah who said, he took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. <clears throat> well, as we come to the living word of God today, we enter into a, uh, a time of looking at Jesus' healing power. 
If you read that entire chapter, all of Matthew 8, you will notice several healing events in a row, and I encourage you to read that later today as part of your devotion. But in this event that we're going to look at, Jesus' popularity is growing throughout all of Israel, and crowds are following him everywhere he goes, often bringing those who need healing to him. Others follow Jesus because they are in need of healing themselves, or they want to petition him on behalf of a sick loved one. These moments demonstrate that Jesus as Messiah both teaches and heals with authority and power. Jesus' healing power points to the fact that he does reign supreme as king. His kingdom is present wherever Jesus is. The healing we are looking at today shows Jesus' work among those who were outside of Jewish culture and Jewish community. Under the law of Moses, lepers were considered ritually unclean, and therefore most Jews would distance themselves from them. When it comes to lepers in Jesus' day, the law was very clear. Those with leprosy are unclean, and they must remain outside of the community until they are declared clean by the priest. This was part of God's law to protect his people from this dreaded disease that caused their flesh to rot off and would eventually, if not stopped, take their lives. There was no treatment that was effective to stop the spread of this disease except for separating an infected person from those who were healthy. In the book of Leviticus chapters 13 and 14, it says that any time someone has a sore on their skin, they are to be taken to the priest to be examined to see if it is leprosy. If it is leprosy, they are unclean and cannot enter into worship, nor can they be around others. Leviticus 13, 45-46 Anyone with such a defiling disease must wear torn clothes, let their hair be unkempt, cover the lower part of their face, and cry out, Unclean! Unclean! Now, I have seen people in the grocery store look a little bit like that, but they weren't yelling out, unclean, unclean. <laughs> well, it goes on. As long as they have the disease, they remain unclean. They must live alone. They must live outside the camp. So, you know, right now we're doing this social dis distancing thing, but it's not new. It's been part of culture for a very long time. In fact, even, even separating people from the house of worship. So this is nothing new. Stay calm. Uh, there's nothing new under the sun. We're told in Ecclesiastes, and social distancing isn't new either. I know it's annoying. I know it's troubling. I hate to stay at home. I'm a go kind of person. I got to tell you, after just two days, I can be pretty squirrely. My wife is nodding her head heavily off camera because I am pretty squirrely if I'm stuck in the house long. But it was necessary in Jesus' day for diseases that they did not know what to do with. And apparently, it is still necessary in our day to deal with diseases that we do not have a natural immunity to and do not know what to do. Well, when a person experienced healing, and praise God for that, they were to go to be examined by the priest and make a sacrifice before they could be readmitted to normal life and worship. For the most part, true leprosy simply had no cure in Jesus' day. The only hope was for a supernatural healing from God. The man in our text is in a hopeless state, separated from family and from friends and worship. More than anything else, he wanted to be healed. But he had no hope. Yet when he heard the good news that there was a healer named Jesus, and that that healer was headed his way, he had to act. This leper, even in the midst of his horrible illness, still had great faith. He recognized the authority, he recognized the power of Jesus to bring healing to him, so he acted in order to receive his healing from the hands of Jesus Christ. 
The man with leprosy approached Jesus. I don't think it was six foot away. And he knelt before him and says, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. Did you notice the humility this man displayed? He knelt before Jesus. He bowed down. He was looking for someone to heal him. He calls him Lord Curios because this is a title for God, our Messiah. In 2 Chronicles 7, 14, it says, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Wow. Humility. It's the key to healing prayer. God has promised to hear us when we humble ourselves before him. <clears throat> Notice also that the man's prayer was in relation to Jesus' will. He says, Lord, if you are willing, you can heal me and make me clean. This leper offers a good example to everyone who comes before the Lord. The man wanted to be healed more than anything else in the world. He wanted to be back with his family and friends, but he also was willing to suffer the loss of everything if that was God's will for him. He asked to be healed and made clean because that would allow him to get rid of the pain he was in. He could go back into the social community. He could go back into worship. He could basically return to normal. We know what it's like. We want to return to normal. Still, he asked in accordance with God's will. In 1 John 5, 14 and 15, it says, This is the confidence we have in approaching God, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. You notice those words at the beginning? This is the confidence we have in approaching God. Do you understand that as believers in Jesus Christ, as his dearly loved children, we can have confidence to come into the throne room of God and ask him for what we need. It, whenever I hear this, whenever I read this, I think of a little child coming into the living room where daddy is sitting in his recliner in our day, and the child just comes in with boldness, doesn't worry about what else is going on in the room, could care less if there's a, a sports event on TV, and there aren't any. <laughs> that child climbs up into daddy's lap and gets his attention. We are allowed, as children of God, as children of the King, to enter with boldness into the throne room, the living room of God, and climb up and say, Daddy, I'm here. Our word of God says that we can cry, Abba, Father, if we have accepted Jesus Christ. And I encourage you, I encourage you, be in prayer. He's listening, and we should pray according to his word. The truth is we may not always get what we ask for from God, but that does not mean he isn't listening. James 4, 3 in the New King James Version tells us, you ask and do not receive because you ask amiss. Or in the New Living Translation, it puts it this way. When you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. I think if we were honest with ourselves, we would have to admit that there are times in our lives when we pray for things that we know are really not for a need we have or a need that someone else has, but just because we want them. We pray in a way that doesn't honor God at times and doesn't bring glory to his name. We ask more in the form of wishing on a star than in faith and the divine promises of God. Sometimes we pray for selfish prayers that are based in our own desires more than out of thankfulness for all that God provides. We want things to go our way, the way we want them. We pray, yet we do not submit to the will of God, and when we do not get what we want, we're mad at God. 
we kind of storm out of the room like a troubled toddler who wanted ice cream for dinner. We say he's not listening or that God is cruel, not realizing that there are some things that we just have to go through and that in the end, we will see that God was truly at work even in our darkest moments. The truth is God knows what is best for us. He only wants to give us what will ultimately be the best for us and those whom we love. And what may look like an unanswered prayer may in fact be an act of God's mercy and grace because if we receive what we really thought we wanted in the long run, it might hurt us more. I must admit there have been times in my life when I have asked for things from God or for God to act on my behalf out of my own selfishness instead of what was best for all concerned. True problems come when God gives us what we ask for rather than what is best for us. But if we trust in him, if we ask according to his will, God will give us what is best, his very best for us. At times we will not understand, but in the eternal view we will know that what God does is always for the best. Isaiah 55, 8 says, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you can imagine. Looking back at our gospel lesson, we find the answer to the leper's prayer in verse 3. It says, Jesus reached out and touched him. No social distancing there. I am willing, Jesus says, and he said then, be healed. And instantly, it says, the leprosy disappeared. Jesus is willing to heal with that healing is the best for us. I do not always understand why some people are healed and other people's prayers seem not to get answered. But God is answering. Sometimes it's not the best for that person if God was to heal them in this life because they will be healed in eternity if they believe in Jesus Christ. But I do know that God has the power to bring healing to anyone he wills. With this healing, Jesus is able to demonstrate his authority over creation. The one through whom all things were made is able to take our brokenness and give us wholeness in its place. The healing Jesus brings is not just physical healing, his healing is complete, physical, emotional, spiritual, and relational healing. Note how Jesus does it. He touches the leper, and then he states his willingness and the command, be healed, or in some translations, be clean. Jesus makes the unclean one clean, the impure one pure, the broken one whole. We can only imagine what the leper felt like as leprosy disappeared. The scales dropped off his skin and it became like the skin of a child. The sores disappeared. The foul old odor was no longer present in his nostrils. His eyebrows and eyelashes returned. His white hair returned to its original dark color. Boy, that would be nice. <laughs> the hoarse voice was replaced by strong vocal cords of a youth. Numbness and pain was replaced by the rush of blood throughout his body. The fingers and toes that had dropped off and gone away are now restored whole. And deep sorrow was replaced with joy. Isolation was replaced with fellowship. Jesus made the difference. And in fact, he always makes the difference. Regardless of how he answers our prayers, his touch and his presence makes all the difference in the world to a heart that has been restored. It might be important to note that God often heals through the normal methods of life. Look at verse 4. Then Jesus said to him, Don't tell anyone about this. Instead, go to the priest and let him examine you. Take along the offering required in the law of Moses for those who have been healed of leprosy. This will be a public testimony that you have been cleansed. I've always been intrigued by the fact that Jesus often tells people not to tell anyone else. But there's a reason for it here. This man, this leper, must go through the normal process 
for someone who is to be healed. The process that was given in the law of Moses. The command to appear before the priest enables the leper to return to the community having been declared clean by the authority that's there. This was the normal way that God showed the truth of healing to the people. Showing himself to the priest, there would be proof that he was indeed healed. In our world today, God most often uses medical science to bring healing to people. He uses the ordinary channels of life to bring about the extraordinary. I believe God is doing that right now as he gives doctors, nurses, and scientists the knowledge to bring treatments for this unusual virus the world is dealing with. Regardless of the message, our God is bringing the healing. No matter how it happens, God has given them the knowledge to do it. He's the one who made us. He's the one who gave us the intelligence. And he's working our healing out. And we must pray that he will inspire the imaginations of our medical professionals to come up with a cure and to do it quick. But I also believe that we are right to ask for God's miraculous healing to come into the world right now. That just as the healing of the leper was a testimony to the power of God shown forth in Jesus Christ, the healing of this present disease would be a testimony to the nations of the power of God in our world today. The last verse we're looking at today points to the fact that God has always been and will always be in the healing business. Verse 17 says, This fulfilled the word of the Lord through the prophet Isaiah who said, He took our sicknesses and removed our diseases. Thanks be to God. Jesus is still in the healing business. His word says that by the stripes that he received on the cross, we are healed. Aren't you thankful for that? Do you believe him today? If you believe him today, then healing is on the way. And so my brothers and sisters in Christ, let us trust him today with our lives. Let us pray to the God of our salvation for the healing of the nations, and he will bring his healing. We don't know how or when, but we know that God will bring the healing. Perhaps it's time for us to humble ourselves before the Lord, like this leper did, and seek his will. For our God is a healing God through our Lord Jesus Christ, the one who gave his life for us and rose again that we might live forever in him. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We've come to a time of prayer in our service this morning, and I'm just going to take a quick look at uh, the prayer requests that I've had coming in. There's just a couple of them here. I know that some of you are not able to bring it in this way, but we do have a couple of prayer requests here. Did anyone else receive any prayer requests? Not that I know of. Okay. Uh, the ones that I have is we have a family who has been out of town and are now trying to get back home. Uh, they're members of our church here, and we need to pray for their safety as they travel and for God's provision as they try to make their way here with uh, most of the restaurants closed and rest areas closed. So we want to be in prayer for them. We also want to be in prayer for Brad Mitchell. He's still in the Heron Hospital. Please be in prayer for him. He is doing better, and people have asked about that. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we're not supposed to go and visit in the hospitals right now, so I've not been able to see him. But I have been praying for you, Brad, if you hear this message, and will continue to do so until the day I can see you face to face again. Also, we have a request from one of the ladies in our church who is a nurse, and we have a few of those in our church, um, to pray for the Heron Hospital, Carbondale, and so many others of the hospitals in our region. My sister is uh, at uh, HSHS St. Elizabeth's in O'Fallon, and they need our prayer too. We're going to be praying for all of our hospital workers. They are God's hands for us right now, and we're truly thankful. We also need to continue to pray for our leaders. We need to pray for those who are trying to figure out the best thing to do. 
We need to pray for our military men and women as some of them are, are forbidden to go home right now to even visit family. We need to pray for our uh, personnel who are overseas right now as well. And we need to pray for Americans who are in other parts of the world right now. Our former pastor from Sunfield Church, Aaron Totten, is in Lithuania, and they are pretty much on lockdown there. So we need to pray for Pastor Aaron as well. Truck drivers. Truck drivers, yes. We need to pray for our truck drivers. My goodness, the truck drivers are having a difficult time. They can't get a hot meal. I uh, saw a video yesterday of one who said the only restrooms available were porta potties. I wouldn't be able to handle that. I'm germaphobe. That'd be terrible. <laughs> need to pray for those who are working in our stores. My son in law works in a grocery store. Uh, folks, if you're out there listening, please calm down. Uh, they're working as hard as they can, but also we need to protect them from this virus as well. Uh, there's a lot of other essential services. If I made the list, boy, it would be very long. So we need to lift small them up to the Lord. Small businesses that may have yeah. to close oh, permanently. Yes. Must pray for our small businesses. They're the backbone of our economy, and they're getting hit awfully hard right now. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our gracious Master and our God, attend to us, we pray. We thank you, Father, that you are with us in this moment. We thank you, Father, that you are there for those who are traveling today. We ask that you would be with them, protect them, provide for them, and bring them home safely. We pray, Lord God, that you would be with all of our medical staff in all of our hospitals around the world even. We pray for our doctors, our nurses, our techs, and everyone working, the administrators as well. The, those who clean up, oh my goodness, they need our prayer. We pray for those who are working in nursing homes right now. We ask that they will be uh, truly protected. And Lord, that you'll give them an extra measure of patience and love for their residents. We do pray for those who are in nursing homes. Right now, they, they can't get visits from their family. Uh, it's wonderful to see those who have visited outside the window, but not everybody's able. Protect them, will you, Lord? Especially those who deal with memory issues, who need constant contact. We ask, Lord, that you would arrest right now in its place the breaking of memories for these people. They are our family. And we ask for your care for them. Father God, we pray for Brad. We ask that you would heal him in Jesus' name that you would give wisdom to those who are working with him for his health, that you would comfort his family as they are away from him. We pray for all the expectant mothers, Lord, that you would protect them from this virus and protect their children as they grow in the womb. Your word says you knit them together in their mother's womb. And we're believing you, Lord, that you're doing that work right now. We pray for the truck drivers who are out on the roads right now. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them, protect them from this virus, uh, help them to find the food they need and the facilities they need. Just, Lord, help them to know that they are uh, truly, truly appreciated in this difficult time. Be with those who are working in uh, businesses that must go on. Lord, we just ask that you would protect them as well as they meet up with the public. Be with all of us. We'll bring your peace on us, we pray. Be with our leaders, Father. Give them wisdom in this time. We pray for our president, for our Congress, for those in the CDC and in the, uh, the health division, Lord. Give them wisdom. Be with our governor, Governor Pritzker. Give him wisdom in how he proceeds as he puts out his executive orders. Help him to make right decisions, we pray. Be with those right here in Sunfield who have been affected by the tornado we had this week. We're thankful, Lord, that it was not any worse than it was and that no lives were lost. But Lord, there are some who need home repairs and have lost possessions. Would you protect them? Would you care for them? Would you provide for them? Lord God, we just ask that you be with our military men and women, no matter where they're serving. We thank you, Lord, for their willingness to sacrifice for us. We pray that you would protect them and use them in your service today. We pray for our missionaries around the world. Pray for Pastor Aaron as she's in Lithuania and for so many others who are abroad. Lord, would you protect them from this virus? 
Would you help the missionaries and pastors that are overseas to, to minister in the midst of this crisis as well? We just ask, Lord, for your healing to touch, to be on the nations. Touch all the people who are ill. Protect the others and make your presence known. We lift up our bishop, Bishop Beard. Would you give him wisdom in the decisions as he's making, protect him from illness and make him strong? We have our superintendent, Reverend Stan Irvin. Protect him as he tries to care for our churches in this Cash River district. And Lord, be with all of our church families, that even as we are away from each other, we will be close together in fellowship through your Holy Spirit. Lord, there's so many other things we could lift up, many that I can't even remember to mention, but God, you know our hearts. We thank you and praise you for all of this in Jesus' precious name and for his sake. Amen. Well, we're going to close this morning with one of my favorite hymns. It's a wonderful hymn. You should know it, I believe. Before we do our closing hymn, Pastor Bill, why don't you remind people how they can send their offerings yes. and that we are still collecting for the local food pantry. Yes, uh, I have had quite a few questions on how people can send in their offerings. Believe it or not, even when the church is closed due to this pandemic, uh, we still do have bills to pay, and uh, God is still faithful and still calls us to our tithes and offerings. Um, if you have a key to the Sunfield Church, you can put it in, uh, in my office. Uh, there is a place for that, and I've made that known to those who are here at the church. It'll be picked up every single day, so nothing's going to happen to it. You can also drop off your food pantry items in the hallway here at the Sunfield Church. Uh, if you are away from here or do not have a key, you can mail your offerings in to either Doug Bishop or David Vansel or myself, and we'll make sure they get in. And if you're at the Greenwood Church, you can mail your offerings into to Dwight Hitt, or you can send them to me. I'll make sure he gets them as well. Um, they're also on the Sunfield webpage. I don't know if it's up yet today, but it will be soon. There is a, uh, a button on there for you to give your offering online. Uh, we thank you for your faithfulness at this difficult time and know that many of you are dealing with financial hardships and we pray God's provision on you. Um, we will be back with you throughout the week in my daily devotions on Facebook and on YouTube. I hope those are blessing you. And next week, as per the order of our bishop, Bishop Frank Beard, uh, I will be broadcasting from my living room instead of the church. Uh, Governor Pritzker has asked that we stay home as much as possible, and Bishop Beard has ordered that all of our church's pastors do the same. So it'll look a little bit different behind me, but, um, you know, you'll be in my living room, and that's always a good place to be. Mm -hmm. Let's sing together, It Is Well With My Soul. I know that many of you who are watching online know that one, as well as those who are here with me. Let's sing together. <clears throat> when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. It is well. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my soul. Though Satan should buffet, though trials should come, let this blessed assurance control that Christ has regarded my helpless estate and hath shed his own blood for my soul. It is well. With my soul, it is well, it is well with my 
my soul, my sin, know the bliss of this glorious thought, my sin, not in part, but the whole, is nailed to the cross, and I bear it no more. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O oh my soul. It is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. And Lord, haste the day when my faith shall be sight. The clouds be rolled back as a scroll. The trump shall resound, and the Lord shall descend, even so it is well with my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. With my soul. It is well, it is well with my soul. Thank you, Jesus. As we depart from this time of worship, may God touch you with his blessings and peace this week. May you experience his power. May you know his healing. And may you be filled to the uttermost with his love and grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, let us go in peace. Amen.